Senator Lyons. Thank you, Mr Deputy President. Yesterday, along with thousands of Australian workers and community members, I attended the March 4 rally here in Canberra. I went to the rally to support Australian workers and to be in solidarity with my union comrades. One of the key features of these rallies across the country was the Abbott government attack on penalty rates. There are up to 4.5 million Australians and their families who depend on penalty rates to make ends meet, and they have very good reason to be worried. Penalty rates have been under threat from the Abbott government since their election. If penalty rates are safe, why then give the Productivity Commission carte blanche to investigate the entire workplace relations framework? So sensitive is Minister Abetz to the whole issue of penalty rates, we had the most bizarre situation in Senate estimates last week where the minister, supported by his bully boy backbenchers, was trying to get me to show him where the productivity inquiry said the word penalty. Of course, what we know of the minister and indeed the whole Abbott government, they don't let truth get in the way of a good story and they change their stories to match their circumstances. The Productivity Commission inquiry is called Workplace Relations Framework. It implies penalty rates, along with the minimum wage and other conditions of employment, will be examined, because by any reckoning, they're in the framework. Any number of the dot points in the Productivity Commission term of reference go to the examination of penalty rates. And of course, we now have the first issues paper which states at 1.4 under what might need to change uh, a clause that says impose higher penalty rates for work outside the five-day working cycle. So just to correct the minister, there in the document is the word penalty. Certainly reducing or abolishing penalty rates has been on the minds of a number of employer associations. John Hart from the Restaurant and Catering Association has been harping on about penalty rates. Uh, he claims they're destroying hospitality businesses and he's been saying that for quite some time. But who is John Hart? Well, according to the Sydney Morning Herald on May 5 last year, he's Mr Hockey's man. He's the chair of Mr Hockey's North Sydney Forum. The North Sydney Forum provides exclusive access to Mr Hockey in return for donations in the form of annual membership fees of up to $22,000 a year. Mr Hockey, the Forum and the New South Wales Liberals refuse to disclose the names of its members. A New Year's Eve 2010 fundraiser for disgraced former New South Wales Police Minister Mike Gallagher was held at Doyle's at Circular Quay. And I'm sure uh, Mr Deputy President may not be familiar with Doyle's, but it's one of the foremost restaurants in Sydney. And the invite stating very clearly that Restaurant and Catering Australia are holding the event. So there is a clear political relationship between Mr Hart and Mr Hockey. And Mr Hockey, of course, is the author of the Productivity Commission's Terms of Reference. Terms of Reference which will examine penalty rates. And of course, penalty rates are a particular bugbear of Mr Hart's. A cosy relationship indeed. The Australian Hotels Association is also seeking unspecified reductions in penalty rates. A massive owner of these hotels is Woolworths. Woolworths likes to sponsor political events and donate items for auctions, and they, as they did at the infamous function where Alan Jones made that disgraceful reference to our former Prime Minister Julia Gillard's father. Woolworths is the largest owner of poker machines in Australia, an industry that relies on problem gambling and the disposable income that penalty rates provide. Coincidentally, the former New South Wales Chief of the Australian Hotels Association was none other than Paul Nicolau, who also headed the Millennium Forum, the Liberal Party's fundraising arm. ICAC has alleged 
that more than one million in illegal donations was made to Liberal MPs through slush funds linked to the former minister, Chris Harcher, and the former chief fundraiser, Paul Nicolau. ICAC also alleges up to 700,000 in illegal donations was made to an organisation linked to Mr Le Nicolau called the Free Enterprise Foundation, which then funnelled the money through to the Liberal Party, another cosy relationship. Australia's biggest brickmaker, Australian Stock Exchange listed Bricksworks, wants its workers to start at 4am instead of the usual 6am as they do at present. And of course, Brickmaker wants that work to start without penalties. And in addition to that, Brickmaker wants to abolish weekend penalty rates. As we know again, Brickworks featured prominently in the Liberal Party fundraising scandal in New South Wales last year over its donations to the party, another cosy relationship. Another employer named as making a submission against the struggling workers' penalty rates is Clubs Australia. Things can't be that tough for Clubs Australia as they managed to find $20 million to run a lengthy campaign against changes to laws regarding poker machines. This campaign was run against the Labor Party and saw sitting Labor MPs attacked in personal campaigns, in pubs and clubs, and in their own electorate. And then came celebrity chef Luke Mangan, Luke Mang Mangan's clanger, complaining at paying penalty rates to staff at his $80 million restaurant empire. And all of this, Mr Deputy Speaker, comes at a time when our ABS stats tell us a completely different story. They tell us that um, turnover in the hospitality industry is increasing year on year and that employment in the hospitality industry continues to rise. According to the most recent figures in the ABS household expenditure surveys, households spend around 25 per cent of their weekly food bill on eating out, and that's up from 22 per cent in 1998. 1999. Then, of course, there are the bizarre comments by the Prime Minister Abbott. And I don't know why we're surprised, because we should be used to his bizarre and chaotic comments by now. And Mr Abbott said quite recently, and I quote, if you don't want to work on a weekend, fair enough, don't work on the weekend, end quote. But what does the voting public think? about penalty rates. We know what the rich and politically linked mates of the Liberal Party think. Well, an essential poll conducted just a month ago found there was 81 per support, cent support for penalty rates, a level that has remained unchanged for two years. Again, a clearly out of touch, chaotic PM believes that uh, workers don't need to work weekends. But of course, workers don't necessarily want to work weekends, but they do so to make ends meet. And the Prime Minister completely fails to understand that our communities wouldn't function without the essential services which operate around the clock and the workers who provide that workforce in aged care, in hospitals, in emergency services, in disability services, cleaning, security, hospitality, airports, and the list goes on and on. Penalty rate workers miss out on a lot of family time, children's events, weddings, sporting events, Christmas, New Year, Easter, and other public holidays. Australians take their leisure time seriously, and most of our leisure activities and family time takes place on weekends or at times when night shift workers are sleeping. And of course, penalty rates can't and don't compensate for these sacrifices, but penalty rates are a significant part of take-home pay. Penalty rates represent around 30 per cent of the total wage of penalty rate workers. And at the Perth rally yesterday, we heard from Jessie, a young hospitality worker. She said, where to begin? My penalty rates mean everything to me. I know it sounds cliche, but it's true. Without penalty rates, I would lose over 30 per cent of my paycheck. Without penalty rates, I will not have a job in hospitality 
because it won't pay me enough. These are the voices the government should hear, not the voices of their rich, politically connected mates. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President.